Welcome. This is Joe Aguirre along with astronomer Dr. Hugh Ross. We're continuing our conversation. Hugh, you're going to answer the question today, what was the Christmas star? Well, Matthew 2 is the one place that talks about the Christmas star. The Greek word that's used for star is the word aster. It can refer to any kind of heavenly body. So it could be a star, it could be a planet, it could be a galaxy, it could be a meteor, a comet, an asteroid, uh, a shooting star, anything like that that would qualify as the as aster. It isn't a singular, so it's really referring to a single object in the sky as opposed to multiple objects. Uh, but there have been a variety of exclamations speculated over the last 2,000 years. Everybody seems to have a theory on what the star is. The most popular theories I see is the idea that uh, it was a big bright comet uh, or a supernova uh, or a conjunction of planets uh, or a planet uh, star conjunction. And in the slide you're looking at right now, this is a slide of the comet Hale Bopp. Uh, I saw it when it was bright in the sky. It was literally the brightest object in the sky. Uh, but something of that nature uh, would have been too spectacular. Because one thing we notice is when you look at Luke 2, uh, the shepherds uh, were surprised by the arrival of the angels and the newborn son. Uh, they were out there with their sheep at night. If there was some spectacular event in the night sky, they would have noticed it. The other thing you can see is that Herod and the religious leaders in Jerusalem were mystified about the star. So it was something that they did not notice. Also, we recognize that only Matthew records this starry event. Uh, the Egyptians don't record it, the Greeks don't, the Indians don't, the Chinese don't. So in my opinion, that would rule out something that would be truly spectacular in the night sky. And everybody at that time was paying attention to even relatively faint comets. So I think the comet explanation is ruled out. Moreover, when it talks about the star here, notice in Matthew 2, the star appears in the east, it disappears and reappears when they're on their way from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. And they refer to it as the star, the same star. Uh, you know, comets can make a trip around the sun, but when they reappear, they don't reappear uh, in the same position in the sky or with the same characteristic light pattern. So a comet, I don't think, uh, would work. Uh, and likewise, I would argue against the supernova explanation because supernova in our galaxy, this, this next set of slides shows you a supernova uh, in a different galaxy. But what it shows you is that when a star goes supernova, for a period of a few weeks, it shines as brightly as all the rest of the stars in the galaxy. Literally outshines a hundred billion other stars. And when a star in our galaxy goes supernova, uh, it's so bright you can see it all day. I mean, you see it in the daytime, that's how bright it is. And uh, this is something that, again, the Chinese, the Indians, and the Egyptians are very meticulous to record, and there's nothing in their writings. Moreover, no supernova can repeat. When a supernova eruption takes place, it's a one-time event. And so that'd be inconsistent what we see there in the text. Uh, the most common explanations given is that it's a conjunction of a planets or a planet with a star. And this next slide shows a conjunction that took place between Jupiter and Saturn and the Moon uh, in 2009. Conjunctions are relatively common, uh, which again makes me skeptical because they're so common, why would the wise men pay so much attention to one conjunction that they would actually mount a major expedition and head to Jerusalem. I think they'd be looking for something a little uh, less common. Moreover, uh, we're talking about uh, a conjunction of planets. This is something everybody paid attention to. Again, Herod and the religious leaders seem to be oblivious to this starry event. And it was, for example, there was a conjunction that many interpreters appeal to between uh, you know, in 2 and 3 BC, where Jupiter and uh, Venus came within a seventh of a moon diameter in one case and a thirtieth of a moon diameter in another case. The second one where they actually merged and looked like a single star. But that again would have been too spectacular. Everybody would have noticed it. And they would say, oh yeah, we saw that event. And we don't see that in the Matthew 2 text and we don't see the shepherds responding to it either in Luke 2. Uh, so I'm skeptical about the uh, recorded uh, conjunction 
of Venus and Jupiter in 2 and 3 BC. Uh, and now, more common again, is a conjunction of a major planet uh, with a star. And probably one of the more common interpretations is Jupiter having a close conjunction with Regulus. Again, these are quite common. Uh, they literally happen uh, you know, every year on a basis. So, uh, but what catches people's attention is at least in today's terminology, uh, Regulus is in the constellation Leo. You know, Leo, the lion, the tribe of Judah. So people kind of make a connection uh, with uh, David and uh, Judah and uh, Jesus. Uh, and then you have Jupiter, which is referred to in many cultural contexts as the king star. So people pay great attention to that. Now, I'm kind of leaning personally towards the idea that it's a recurring nova. Supernova can't repeat, but there's a very rare class of novae. You say, what's a nova? Well, unlike a supernova, a nova will go from being virtually invisible to being quite bright, but you won't see it in the daytime. A spectacular nova is typically as bright as, say, the North Star. So it won't be the brightest star in the sky, but people who are paying attention to the sky, looking at all the constellations night after night, would be quite aware of what they call a guest star, a new star that shows up in the constellation. And a very small percentage of novae uh, have the potential of recurring, where the star would explode, become, say, as bright as a North Star, disappear from view after a couple of months, and then say a year to two years later, it could reappear in the same character. The advantage here is it reappears in the same position in the night sky, same position on the celestial sphere, and would appear with the same light characteristics, and it would be a single star. You know, one of the problems with a conjunction idea, you're referring to multiple stars, not just a single star, and Matthew 2, puts the word aster in the singular, and when the Magi see the star again, they refer to it as the star, the same star they saw back in the east. Uh, but keep in mind, it's just one chapter, uh, actually just a portion of chapter two of a Matthew. We don't have a lot of details about the star, uh, but I think that's about as far as we can push it based on the data that we have and the historical recordings that were around at that time that we see in book two. So. I lean towards the idea it's a recurring nova, and I'm skeptical towards the other explanations, but nobody can claim to have positive proof as to exactly what the star is.